Hey guys, welcome back to the Home Enthusiasts. Uh, I'm Remy, and today we've got Julio from Carpet Court. Uh, Carpet Court has been helping us out a lot um, to do all things carpet with our properties, and today they're here to answer a lot of questions about it. Turn your house into a home and join us on the Home Enthusiast Podcast. Julio, um, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. Um, Mate, let's get into the questions. Uh, they're mostly general questions, uh, but they will help people out. So the first one that comes to mind for me is, can you put carpet anywhere inside a property or is there areas that you wouldn't? Well, basically carpet is a soft product and then normally you put it in the bedrooms. Yeah. All lounge, sometimes now in the new house, they put all the hard floor into a common area. Okay, lounge, like a living dining, area. Kitchen and then carpet only stay at the bedroom. Yeah. Obviously, you don't put a bedroom in the toilet and laundry. That's stay yeah. hard floor. Yeah. So, so wet area, you wouldn't put that in the bathroom yeah, or anything. So carpet bedrooms commonly, mm -hmm. you can extend it into the lounge or even small study sometimes. Okay. Uh, kitchens? Definitely not. Definitely not, yeah. Definitely not. Food and water, anything water, carpet, right. probably doesn't right. matter. You spill something, you know, you cook and then oil and drips, tomato sauce, right. whatever. <laughs> yeah, wine stains. Mm. Yeah, okay, I understand. Um, can you tell me roughly um, how many types of carpets are there, you know, in you know, uh, available to the public? A range? Yeah. Close to 400, 450. Okay. It's a lot. A lot. So give me, for example, can you give me the most three common ones? Well, we ask a question when the customers walk in. Okay. What are you doing for this house? Yeah. Oh, I want to sell my house. Oh, no, hang on. I want to put it into rental. Oh, hang on. I want to leave this for five years and then sell it or demolish. So oh, that's sad. the question that we guide the customer what sort of product. Yep. So if you want to, okay, I want to put it in, in the market for investment. Mm -hmm. We don't suggest the top end carpet that's going to cost $120 a square meter. Right. Okay. Same with the other way around. If you want to enjoy your house for the next 20 years, you don't want to put an investment chip and carpet. Yeah. So that's why it depends what they're going to do. Yeah. And then we suggest it to the right product. So what is it for and then different? So what types of carpets are we talking like in terms of so, fabrics? Yes. Investment, uh, we suggest uh, polypropylene okay. because they're quite tough, yeah. easy to clean, and obviously not too expensive. Okay. If you want to sell the property, mm. we suggest polyester. Yeah. Feels nice, looks new, and doesn't cost expensive like a nylon. So is that like your middle range, you would say? Polyester is, we call it do up to sell. Okay. Now we go into a nylon that people want to live in the house. Oh, this is my dream house. This is my family house. I want to stay here at least six, seven years or even 20 years. Some people say, oh, this yeah. is my forever homes. So we suggest a nylon. Right. They are robust, they tough, obviously a little bit more expensive, Yeah. but it lasts a lot longer than polyester. And for example, right, from the uh, first type, the cheaper type, to that nylon uh, range, yeah. uh, price per square meter, how does that? You start about, say, 35 fully installed for uh, polypropylene. 35, okay, wow, up to 120. Well, if you're starting point on the nylon, you start about, say, 55. Okay. Entry level of polypropylene, entry level of nylon, so it's 55, so $20 different. Okay, cool, per square meter. So that can make a big difference if you've got a lot of... Well, that's $20 a square. Yeah. You have to remember buying carpet is per linear, which is 3.6. Right. So you times 3.6, that's $80 each yeah, yeah. per meter. Yeah. So, right, okay. Yeah, by the time you add up the linear meter, mm -hmm. it adds up a little bit, but yeah. it lasts a lot longer if you want to live in the house. Understood. Okay, cool. Um, how important is the underlay and do you is there a different type of underlay for your cheaper carpet versus your higher range carpet correct the underlay pure just to feel so if you buy the cheapest underlay and let's say you want to upgrade to the middle one it doesn't mean the cheaper underlay will last only six years mm -hmm. and the middle one like you know last 10 years it doesn't work that way okay it pure the feel but you don't want to put the cheapest underlay when you buy the most expensive carpet so you buy the cheapest underlay for investment because you don't live there. You're not going to step in there. 
Yeah. So it's not going to make any difference. So that's why that's the type of the carpet. You go to the medium for drop to sell, the room there that you hardly use, the rumpus at the back there, or kids sometimes go there just only once a day for an hour or a couple hours. Yep. And is that the thickness that changes? The density. The so density, more. okay. Yeah. Thickness is sometimes they're quite similar, but the quality of the density is more important. So the higher grade is a lot denser compared to the medium one is hollower. The okay. hollower, it's flatter, quicker. Yep. Yeah. So denser, obviously if you want to live in the yeah, house, yeah, yeah. Of course. it's denser, lasts longer. I've walked on some carpets that were like, Flat. you put your foot into it and it's amazing. Yeah. And I've walked on some carpet, I'm like, this is rock Feel like solid. A concrete. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, if you put if you have a cheap carpet yeah. and a very very good underlay, would you feel the difference? Absolutely, you would. Okay, so it has a massive impact. Absolutely, okay. the cheaper end is only eight mil. Yeah, the top end is ten mil, but it's hundred gsm, so it's a lot tougher and denser. Yeah, and obviously two mil is different. Okay, um, is that the underlay? Do you include that? For example, when you say one hundred twenty bucks so square meters for nylon, whatever, is that including underlay? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. And does that include a good underlay yes. or can you still upgrade from that? When you buy a cheap end like a polypropylene, mm -hmm. we included the standard underlay. So people doesn't have to think about it. Okay. If you buy the medium one, we include the medium underlay. Yeah. So a certain level like above $60 or whatever, you include the top end underlay anyway. Yeah, okay. So, so well, yeah. you can't upgrade it because it's the top end. That's awesome. Okay. Um, can you put Let's say you've got a living area and it's all, and it's tiled mm -hmm. or it's got wooden floors on it and people just want to put carpet over it. Can you do it? Absolutely. So you put underlay and you put it over or you don't need to remove anything. Correct. Well, we asked the customer to option. Do you want to have an extra cost for us to lift the tiles? Yeah. I said yes or no. Oh, no, I don't want to mess. I don't want extra money. Yep. We can put the carpet on top mm -hmm. of the tiles. So we're not removing any tiles. We're not jackhammer it. So no noise, no dust. Obviously, no extra money. And a uh, big question, obviously, is one day if they want to remove that carpet, is the floor going to be the same? Or is it the going to be The tiles will ruin a little bit. Well, what, sorry? And the tiles will ruin a little bit because we have to glue the smooth edge on top uh, of tiles. Oh, yeah. Okay. It won't be smashed, but it's just a mark of a glue. Okay. If they want to remove it, we can try to remove the, obviously, the smooth edge carefully. Yeah. But you know, sometimes there's a mark, a black mark, obviously, because we glue this with it. Yeah, okay. A uh, little bit, a little bit. Do you see that happen often or not really? No. No. Once they put a carpet, five, six years, they're not going to think, oh, I want to remove the carpet. Yeah. I want to put it back as the tiles. Almost none. Yeah, I understand. Um, any favorite colors for carpets? Do you recommend different carpets for different areas? Do you recommend different color carpets for... Darker rooms, lighter room. Uh, you don't put a different colors in particular room and different colors again because you have to be a uniform. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Later on down the track, if you want to sell the property, you have to redo everything to make it the same color because mm. otherwise the the new buyer is going to look. Oh, how come it's a different color? Of course, I've seen different colors in like uh, like movie rooms. Correct. You know, darker carpet in movie rooms, but. All the rest normally is so, uniform. So. so let's say home theater, you want to put a, a different material that yeah. so luxury. Uh, yeah, of sometimes course. they put a bright red. Yeah. Sometimes they put a black. Yeah. So in the bedroom, they put obviously a gray or brown or charcoal. What's your favorite color carpet? Maybe gray. Yeah. Is that the most? Like gray or yeah, like gray. Yeah. That's that's what nice and in the modern. modern. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Brown is safe, but gray is more modern. Yeah. Um. Let's talk about something that a lot of people go through. You've got kids, uh, you drink wine, mm. they put the red wine on carpet. Mm. Mate, how hard is it to remove carpet stains? And it does. Uh, is it different from the cheapest kind of carpet to the higher top? Is it harder? What's the difference? No. People don't understand when they spill something, the most important and crucial, you have to clean it straight away. You have to? Clean, clean it, straight it straight away. away. How? So you just have a sponge and water. Yep. Tap it, do it two, three times, it will come off. Really? All the fiber now, the polypropylene, the polyester, the nylon, is designed with the color go all the way through the yarn. So it doesn't matter polypropylene or nylon, you spill something, cloth, yeah. water, sponge it, it will come off. Mate, I think a lot of people are going to really like this. Well, so sponge, water, 
go up and down. Get it out. So the whole myth about putting straight away, like, uh, um, I think it was bicarbonate or um, I forgot that white powder that you put on top yeah. straight away. It doesn't do... Don't do anything fancy. Buy anything okay. from supermarket. Cloth and water yep. is the best. That's it. Okay. Straight away. Straight away. Okay. If they clean it straight away, the investment property sometimes, you know, a tenant, they spill something. Oh, I tried to clean it this and that. Try just a cloth and water, sponge it, it will come off. If you don't do anything for a couple of days? It gets harder. Even a couple hours, it gets harder. Come so on. if you spill something... Straight away. Well, if you spill something, you don't walk away and clean it in two hours later. Yeah. No. You clean it straight away. Yeah. Okay. That's the move. But the sooner thing. you act, the better. Correct. Cool. Um, one thing that's come up a lot in, in, in recent years is allergies. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I'm, you know, I want to move in here, but I do need to change. I need to remove the carpet. I'm allergic. So is there types of carpets that people that are allergic to carpets can do? Or is it every type is the same? They're going to be allergic, whatever. Technically, if you have an allergy, you should put a hard floor in yeah. that particular bedroom. If you buy the most expensive or a shorter or denser doesn't make any big difference. If you're an allergy because it's a dust, it will yep. sit on top of the carpet. If you buy the cheap one, the dust is just going to sit there. Yep. If you buy the most expensive, it's not different. So put a hard floor is the better solution. Okay. Instead of buying the most expensive, oh, I think this is a better product. It will do no different. Yeah. Um, installing carpet, is it, do you need people who really know what they're doing or can people try and do it at home? What's the difference between, like, you know, uh, we see people painting their own home. Can you do carpet yourself or is it really a skill that's, you know, to not damage any skirtings or anything like that? Good question. Carpet is a lot harder to install compared to if you want to install a laminate hard floor. Okay. DIY person can do it. They look at the YouTube. Oh, I think I know how to do it. Carpet, <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> you have to stretch it properly. Yep. If you don't stretch it properly, it will wrinkle down the track. Okay. So... If you want to, oh, okay, I want to replace the carpet, get somebody else that know how to do it or a carpet layer, a, a proper carpet layer. Painting, you patch up a little bit, doesn't look nice, you can do it again. Yeah. Carpet, once you cut it, once, yeah. that's it. Once it's wrinkled, you have to stretch it, that's going to be even harder again to fix it. Yeah, right, okay. So, uh, so it's, 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 it's a pretty big skill to have. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so that's... don't ask your builders to install the carpet. Or DIY person, or yeah, a maybe, carpet person, a carpet liars, absolutely. Yes. Okay, uh, mate. Final questions. Um, final question. Sorry. So sometimes you walk into a property and you see the stairs, and you see that clearly people have walked on here. And the hallways get used a lot more. Then you got carpet where the uh, bedrooms where the carpet looks really good, but in all the hallways and where people walk a lot, you you can really see yeah. where it's used. Is there anything we can you can do about this? Maybe not to fix it, but to manage it, or is it is not it? really? Yeah. Um, because we call it the watermark. Yeah. People walk. Obviously, the hallway is the the busier street. From the bathroom. Go to back the bedroom. and forth, back and forth, and then stairs. You go up and down, up and down. A bedroom is a destination. So you go in, or you up. Hallway, you go back up and down, up and down. So if you want to, you can vacuum twice a week or even three times a week. There's no too much vacuuming. So the more you vacuum, the more fiber will come back and go up instead of flatten. Once it's flattened, okay. it's getting harder and harder. If you vacuum, even once a week, it's still okay. But some people vacuum once every two weeks. That's so actually vacuuming helps. Correct. It's funny because when you vacuum, like it looks better after. Correct. Obviously, not just because you picked up dust, but Correct. the actual carpet. The actual fiber will go back up instead of lying flat. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, how long does it take for the carpet to start looking a bit old? How long, let's say you just install carpet in property, mm -hmm. and maybe that's going to be different for the cheaper, type, cheaper right. type of carpet to the most expensive. How long would you say the customer call me in six, eight, ten years? What, what's the normal... Longevity. Entry level probably about seven to eight. It depends how many people, obviously. If they've got only one person, they might last 10 years. Yeah. If they have 14 ages, two parents, yeah. they might last only six years. And you can see the watermark quicker. Okay. And if they vacuum once every two weeks, it's going to make it even worse again. So the more people in the house, the more you're going to vacuum. You need to vacuum more. 
Okay. Yeah. Especially teenagers, they go back up and down. Yeah. Young family with the baby, the baby's not going to walk. So, yep. you know, that's maybe once a week vacuuming, it's okay. And a higher end of carpet, how long would that last? Maybe 10 to 12. 10 to 12. Yeah, yeah, that's why... But people, same thing again. Same yeah, problem. you still need to vacuum. Yeah. Mm. Oh, for sure. That's a good... That's a good... It doesn't thing. mean people sometimes think, oh, I'm going to buy a little bit more or I'm going to do less vacuuming. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Like you need to look after it. Yeah. Correct. Um, okay. Mate, thank you very much. Honestly, this has been really helpful. I even picked up a few things for myself, so really appreciate it. Um, everyone, this is um, Julio from Carpet Court. Uh, if you've got any questions, we'll put um, all their links on our podcast. And, mate, thank you very much. Really appreciate no your problem. time. Thanks, Thanks mate. for having me. Cheers. Thank you.